Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the Rankle Rank OPG signaling pathway and we're going to talk about what the purpose of this pathway is and we're going to talk about how this pathway operates. So to begin, Rankle or R-A-N-K-L actually stands for Receptor Activator of Nuclear Factor Kappa B Ligand and it is a protein that is expressed by osteoblasts and these are bone cells that are involved in uh, formation of bone. Now, rankle actually plays an important role in osteoclast formation function and survival. Osteoclasts are bone cells that actually reabsorb bone. Now, rank, the name um, actually means receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, and rank is actually as its name suggests, a receptor, and it's a receptor that's located on osteoclast precursors and mature osteoclasts. And RANK is a receptor for RANK-L, or RANK-L is actually the ligand for the RANK receptor. And OPG stands for osteoprotegrin, or osteoprotegrin. And this protein is actually um, also expressed by osteoblasts, it binds to and inhibits rank L. It's a regulator of the rank ligand. And as I mentioned before, it's expressed by osteoblasts, but it's also expressed by other tissues, including the spleen, bone marrow, heart, liver, and kidneys. And because it inhibits rank L, it is actually protective against bone loss. If you think about it, rank L plays an important role in osteoclast formation, function, and survival. We've mentioned that osteoclasts are involved in bone reabsorption. So that would mean that if we have osteoprotegrin or OPG, OPG inhibits rank L, rank L would not be able to activate osteoclasts. So this is the reason why OPG is protective against bone loss. So here is a brief diagram with osteoblasts and osteoclast precursors. Now the osteoclast precursors, as we mentioned before, have the rank receptor on their cell membrane. Now the osteoblasts themselves will express and release the rank L or rank ligand protein. They also will express and release OPG or osteoprotegrin. OPG will then bind to inhibit rank L. It's a regulator or a negative regulator of rank L. And also interesting to point out is that estrogens like estradiol can actually act on osteoblasts to limit the release of rank L. This becomes important during menopause with regards to osteoporosis. We'll talk about this in another lesson, but I just wanted to mention here that estradiol acts as an important regulator of rank L release from osteoblasts. Now, if we have rank L and it's available to bind to rank receptors on osteoclast precursors, it initiates those osteoclast precursors to differentiate into mature osteoclasts. So mature osteoclasts um, actually form from multiple osteoclast precursors. So um, with regards to osteoclast precursors, they're mononucleated, but during differentiation, um, many or several osteoclast precursors will fuse together to form one osteoclast. This is why osteoclasts become multinucleated because they're actually a product of several osteoclast precursors. Now, osteoclasts or mature osteoclasts also exhibit the rank receptor on their cell membrane. And this becomes important because rank ligand can also bind to the rank receptor on mature osteoclasts. When this happens, this will lead to activation of those osteoclasts. So osteoclasts become activated and then they lead to bone reabsorption. Now to further understand how differentiation and activation occur in the osteoclast, we'll look at a closer look of the um, intracellular signaling pathways inside the osteoclast. So again, the osteoclast has a rank receptor on its cell membrane. 
we know that rank ligand binds to the rank receptor. And we also know that osteoprotegerin actually binds to rank ligand. I didn't mention before, but osteoprotegerin actually mimics the rank receptor. That's why it can actually bind to the rank ligand. But nonetheless, we know that OPG will bind to and inhibit rank ligand. We know that rank ligand rank ligand can activate the rank receptor. When the rank receptor is activated, it can lead to a activation of the protein TRAF6 or TRAF6. TRAF6 will lead to several different downstream responses within the cell. TRAF6 can lead to the activation of SRC, which can then lead to the activation of the PI3 kinase pathway when PI3K becomes active, its target um, AKT will become activated, which will then lead to a mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 becoming activated. This will then lead to an increase or in um, promotion of cell survival and growth of the osteoclast. Now, TRAF6 can also activate other targets, it can activate MEK, which leads to the activation of ERK. ERK can also aid in cell survival and growth, and ERK can also facilitate differentiation of an osteoclast precursor. TRAF6 can also lead to the activation of junk, and junk can lead to the activation of CFOS and CJUN which also plays a role in differentiation. Now, TRAF6 can also lead to a downstream activation of P38. P38 can lead to activation of MITF proteins, and MITF can eventually lead to or promote or regulate a differentiation response of osteoclast precursors. And finally, TRAF6 can also activate IKK and NF-kappa-B signaling, which as well aids in osteoclast precursor differentiation to form a mature osteoclast. So this entire pathway leads to the differentiation of osteoclast precursors, the fusion of several osteoclast precursors to form a single mature osteoclast, and also leads to an activation of the osteoclast in order for the osteoclast to be able to actually um, facilitate bone reabsorption. Anyways, guys, that was a quick lesson on the rank L rank OPG signaling pathway. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.